Teacup Tempest by Wigworm. The Hokage had Hito on his knee. Kakashi was a little disturbed by that. Sure, he knew that Maki had told him yesterday that Sarutobi was going to be babysitting for her, but to actually see it was still disturbing. Kakashi-san? Sarutobi looked at him with a glint in his eyes that Kakashi had only ever seen directed at... Well, to tell the truth, Kakashi had never seen the Hokage with such a look. I hear that you are dating Tatsumaki-chan. He nodded, slowly, wondering when he'd stepped into an alternate universe where he was the Sarudame's personal nemesis, because that was exactly what it felt like. Yes, sir. Kakashi didn't fidget, but he really wanted to. If there was one man who could make him feel nervous, Sarutobi Hiruzen was him. There had been at one point two men, but Namikaze Minato was long dead now. I see that you've noticed who it is that I'm babysitting. Kagashi nodded, seemingly relaxed. I have, Sarutobi sama. Kagashi wondered why he'd been called to meet with the Hokage the day before going out on the mission to Wave. Wave was only a few days' travel, even with a civilian, and Kagashi had decided over a week ago that his team was ready for an easy C rank. Wave wasn't even a bodyguard mission. It was classed as an escort mission. May I ask Sarutobi-sama how you know Yamamoto-san? Sarutobi pinned him with a deep look of suspicion. I consider her my granddaughter, Kagashi-san. Oh, and didn't knowing that make the meeting that much more awkward? He was dating someone the Hokage thought of as a granddaughter. He was in love with someone the Hokage thought of as a granddaughter. Kakashi was not assured of his continued existence. I understand, Okagi-sama. He did understand. Sarutobi obviously wanted his granddaughter to be lawfully wed and happy. And that was Kakashi's plan, to ask Maki to marry him. It had taken Anko to finally knock it into his head that he loved the girl and her son, so there was really only one thing he could do, and that was marry her before she got away. Azuma had only reinforced his conviction of his love for his girlfriend. That he was being told that there would be a shotgun wedding if thought necessary just meant that there would be another VIP invitation sent out to the wedding. A personal family VIP invitation instead of a political VIP invitation. Do you know what this meeting is about, Kakashi-san? Sarutobi asked in a gentler tone, distracting Hito with his red and white Hokage hat. Kakashi inwardly raised an eyebrow and shook his head. He didn't really have a clue why Maki had wanted to meet him at the Hokage Tower, and he had less of a clue as to why the Hokage himself was involving himself. No, sir. He had thought that he and Maki had worked out what it needed addressing the night before. Tatsumaki-chan has something that she needs to tell you. It's very important that you listen to what she says and that you believe her. Saratobi took a breath. I know what it is that she is going to tell you, so believe me when I know how it is that you are going to react. His tone softened again and his eyes grew kind, though stayed hardened like diamonds. You will not like the news. You will not react in a negative manner. If you feel the need to do so, excuse yourself as politely as possible and come back here. You may scream at me if you so need to release your feelings at someone. Whatever it is that Marky has to tell him must be really bad. Worse than what she told him the night before. He suddenly wondered if Maki was being dragged back into Anbuyu full time and that her new mission wasn't just a one-time thing. Gods, he hoped not. She was already far past due on her time in that department and he wanted nothing to do with her going back. It had only been two and a half months since her last day. He closed his eyes and tried to think of the worst thing she could possibly tell him. If she was pregnant again, would he care? Well, of course he would, but would that stop him from loving her? No. No, even if Maki-chan was pregnant again, if it was because of what happened on that last day when he had unintentionally left her to whatever horrors she went through, he wouldn't stop loving her. It would be his own fault, anyway, for letting her get hurt. Anyway, he was the one who had left her behind. He'd just have another stepchild to raise with Hito. He loved Hito. Kakashi was sure that he would love another of Maki's children. Whatever it is that Maki has to say, Hokage-sama, I won't have a negative reaction to it. 
You are far too sure of yourself, Kakashi-san. Just remember, she is telling the truth. Sarutobi turned his attention to Hito, and the boy laughed on the Hokage's knee. Kakashi watched them for a moment before bowing and going to the door that Sarutobi had indicated Maki was waiting for him. He had to be very careful. He wondered to himself if he should ask her to marry him first before she told him her news, or if he should wait and prove to her that he doesn't care what she's going to tell him. He still wants to be with her, no matter what. Maki was sitting on the couch in the living room, her legs drawn up under her chin and her short blonde hair obscuring her face in shadow. She was wearing bright clothing like she always did, and when she looked up at him, Kakashi could see real sorrow and devastation in her blue eyes. That look in her eyes hurt Kakashi more in the light of day than it had 12 hours ago when she had tried to give herself to him. Maki-chan? Kakashi sat beside her, carefully placing his arm around her shoulders. She didn't flinch from him. Instead, she leaned into his body, and he hugged her. Is this thing that you're going to tell me, is it why you were forcing yourself to be so happy yesterday? Do you think that whatever it is that you're going to tell me will run me off? Maki buried her face in his neck and sniffed back tears. You don't know how hard it is. How hard it's been. Kakashi. She wound her arms around his neck and he could feel her body shiver against his with fear. Oh, Kakashi, I never thought that I would... I never knew how hard this would be. Maki. Kakashi leaned back a little and looked into her tear-stained face. She was beautiful. I... He couldn't say it. Not yet. Instead, he reached for his face and drew his mask down, burying his face to her. He then slowly lowered his head and gently pressed his lips to hers. His eyes stayed open, watching her face for any sign of distress. Maki's eyes widened when their lips touched, and then she relaxed into his arms, allowing him to kiss her. Her eyes drifted shut, and Kakashi felt his heart speed up when she leaned into his kiss, his lips caressing hers. Kakashi finally pulled away, his hands cradling her face. Maki's eyes opened, and Kakashi stared into the blue irises, dazed by their first kiss. Maki, I promised last night that I will never leave you, he whispered to her, reminding her of his commitment, knowing that this was the perfect time to tell her that he loved her. I am not your Hanamoto Taxi, Maki, Maki murmured, interrupting him. I wasn't born with that name. So... Kakashi murmured back. I don't care what your birth name is. I, I am not almost 17 years old. She interrupted him again, her eyes filling with tears again. Hito is my son, a product of one of my teachers raping me on my birthday. Maki, Kakashi shook his head slowly. Maki, it's okay. I I'm a Ganin Shinobi. I graduated from the academy on Hito's second birthday. Maki released Kakashi's neck and stood, stepping away from the jonin. I'm not almost 17. I'm younger. I wasn't born down to Motu Tatsumaki. I made her up because it was easier to be her than who I really was. Maki. Kakashi stood as well, facing the blonde. Maki. My name is... Maki paused, her shoulders tightening. My name is Usomaki Naruto, and I am almost 13 years old. I got pregnant when I was 10. I gave birth by myself in my apartment just over two years ago. I've been masquerading as Maki because everyone likes her. She doesn't get odd stares or, or, or hated looks. The blonde was quivering where she stood. Her hands rose and her fingers fold into a release seal, and without the tiniest poof of air or smoke, Maki seemed to melt like mercury. And in her place was someone that Kakashi had been trying to ignore because of how he... She moved like the woman he was in love with. I was born a girl. I don't know why everyone thinks that I'm... That Naruto is a boy. I guess because it never mattered the most. Naruto bowed her head and her breathing was uneven. Kakashi stumbled back, sitting heavily on the couch. It couldn't be true. But it had to be because otherwise the Hokage wouldn't have told him to believe whatever it was that Maki... That Naruto was going to say. Who, who knows this? Kakashi bit out trying as hard as he could to keep his calm. It wasn't easy because the woman that he was in love with didn't exist. And if she did, she was 12. He had been... Imagining sex with a 12-year-old. He had fallen in love with a 12-year-old. On Ihito and Hiruzenji-san.
Naruto mumbled her eyes on the ground. Kakashi was thankful that the child, that his student wasn't looking at him because there was just too much for him to handle right now. Baki was Naruto. It made him feel sick to his stomach to think that what he had imagined doing with Maki, he had imagined doing to Naruto. Oh, he thought for the longest time that Maki was Naruto's illegitimate half-sister, so the fact that he was in love with Minato's daughter wasn't a strange thought. It was that Minato's daughter was 12. Maki was 12. He was disgusted by himself. He couldn't look up when Naruto... Naruto in Maki's brilliant clothing and her haircut and her face only with six scars on her cheeks. He said nothing when Naruto finished speaking, her tone low and soft and cautious. But he can't stop himself from still loving Maki, from loving Naruto, and oh, how much that hurt to you know. It felt like his heart was going to quit on him. Just up and stop. So instead of telling Naruto that what they had when she was Magi had vanished into the wind, Kakashi looked up blankly and carefully told Naruto that he was unpleased with how she had tricked him. And Kakashi told her that he needed time to reconcile everything that he knew of Magi to be associated with Naruto instead. Naruto's face had a look of despair on it, and Kakashi couldn't help but reach out and cup her cheek. Naruto-chan. He couldn't help but see Maki in every move that Naruto made. Just give me some time. Naruto nodded, eyes shuddered so that he couldn't see what she was thinking. Kakashi couldn't help but want to kiss her again, even knowing her true age. He had already kissed her once before. He couldn't think of any harm in him kissing her again. It might be the last kiss he would ever share with Maki. So he shoved away every thought that was against his wish to be with Maki, and he leaned down. And oh, how far he had to lean down. Naruto really was so much smaller than Kakashi could have ever imagined. And he pressed their lips together again. Naruto kissed him back, and he had to stop himself from pulling away because she was too young, too small to be kissing him. But he was kissing her goodbye. Kakashi? Her voice was so childish when she spoke after Kakashi separated them from each other, pulling his mask back up. Will you ever... Will we... She couldn't get the words out, and Kakashi didn't know how to respond to her. He didn't know the answer either. The Hokage was still playing cheerfully with Hito in the main room when Kakashi left Naruto in the sitting room. Sarutobi looked up from the toddler, and Kakashi couldn't stop a flinch when Hito noticed him as well. Dajun! Hino pulled himself from Sarutobi's arms and raced to Kakashi. Kakashi lifted the boy and kissed his cheeks and then set the boy down. Hito-chan, why don't you go see Kachan? Hito grinned at Kakashi, and Kakashi pointed the child in the direction of the door he had just exited. Kachan is right through there. Bye-bye, Tochan! Hito hugged Kakashi's legs and then barreled along through the doors. Kakashi closed the door behind his son and turned to Sarutobi, his heart hovering somewhere around his ankles. Kakashi-san? Sarutobi's face was carved from granite, and Kakashi almost couldn't look him in the eyes. Hokage-sama? Kakashi paused and gathered a false calm around himself. May I ask how long have you known that Naruto was Maki-chan? She told me yesterday. Sarutobi sighed heavily. She came to me after you were assigned the wave mission, in return for looking after Hito while both of you are gone. I told Naruto that she had to tell you the truth. I was not about to let you be lied to any longer. Hokage-sama. Kakashi struggled with his emotions, taking several steps toward the grandfatherly Hokage. I used to love her. Sarutobi blinked, seemingly unsurprised by his jonin's revelation. I thought you would. Kakashi fell to his knees, bowing his head. Yes, he breathed out. Yes, I still love her, and it's wrong, I know. Kakashi didn't look up when Sarutobi moved to stand over him. He was ready for his fate. 
He was in love with a 12-year-old girl that the Hokage had claimed as a granddaughter. There was no turning back from this. He knelt for several long moments, and there was silence from above him. Finally, Sarutobi cleared his throat. I trust that you will remain chaste until she is of a proper age. It was not a question. Kakashi blinked in shock and looked up, staring at the older man. Hokage-sama? He was sure that Sarutobi didn't mean what Kakashi thought he meant by that. There was no way that he was getting the Hokage's blessing on their relationship. Naruto was too young. Naruto was Kakashi's student. It was inappropriate in the extreme for them to have a relationship. I said, Sarutobi raised an eyebrow, I trust that you will remain chaste until Naruto is of a proper age, which means that if I ever have even an inkling of you laying with her before she is 16, I will assign you to clean up duty in the Chunin toilets for a year. There was a cold in the room that wasn't there before, and Kakashi was still gaping at the man in front of him. There was no way that Sarutobi had just granted him permission to continue dating a 12-year-old. That just wasn't... Sir? Naruto will continue to be Yamamoto Tatsumaki. You may continue to see her and Hito-chan. Sarutobi shook his head. I am only allowing this because both Naruto and Hito-chan love you. You also love them. I know that you would do anything in your power to make sure that they are not hurt, especially by yourself. I have no fear that you will protect them both when the rumor of Hito-chan being your child gets outside the walls of Kanaha. Sarutobi looked at him as though Kakashi were responsible for the rumors. And the rumors will get out. You are Sharingan no Kakashi. Your infamy is known from wind country to lightning country. Kakashi felt his heart speed up, fear coursing through his veins. Sarutobi was right. The rumors would get out of Kanaha and Fire Country. Wind and lightning and earth would find out. And there would most definitely be assassins sent from Iwa to kill his family, whether his family was by joys or by blood. Perhaps it was a good thing that Naruto was Maki. Maki could disappear for a long time as Naruto. Sarutobi was willing to watch Hito. Heck, most of the elite would be more than pleased to watch over Hito should the need arise. But his brain still wouldn't process the fact that Sarutobi had given his blessing. Hokage-sama, why would you... I mean, Naruto is practically your granddaughter. She's 12! Stop reminding me. Zarat always snarled at him. I know exactly how old that little girl is. I have no doubt that she will go against me if I forbid her to continue to see you, whether you want her to or not. I am also fairly certain that she will have no interest in sex for some time, even after she is of age, given how Hito came about. Kakashi flinched at the reminder of Maki's rape, and then his mind stuttered to a halt. It wasn't Maki who had been raped when she had been 14. It had been Naruto. When she had been 10! There was nothing that he could do to calm his building rage until Sarutobi spoke again. Naruto told me that she managed to get up after her assault and kill the man who had raped her. His eyes hardened, and Kakashi tried to stay as calm as he could, knowing that Naruto's rapist was dead. The man who took her then, he had once been her teacher. There was fire in Sarutobi's countenance as he glared. If I hear of you ever- I WANT IT! Kakashi's growled out, shocked for a moment that his Hokage would ever think that of him! But then, who would ever expect a teacher in the academy either? Sarutobi went back to his chair. I am heartily glad to hear your vehement denial, Kakashi-san. He sat and soothed a finger over an eyebrow, the tip of his finger lingering on his temple, indicating his headache. He was not the only one in the room with pain. Hokage-sama, Kakashi stood to his feet 
his face completely serious in a manner that he hadn't shown anyone but his serious opponents in a long time. I swear on my life, on Minato Sensei's grave, on Obito's sacrifice, I will never force myself on Naruto. I will never stop loving her. I will protect her and our child until the day I die. Kakashi received a nod from Saratobi and the Hokage took a deep breath, letting some of the stress in his shoulders out as he sighed. I will take your oath and hold you to it. So be it, Hatake Kakashi Jonin of Konoha Gakure. If you break your sworn oath, Konoha and all of Fire Country are bound in promise to punish you for your crime. Kakashi gave Saratobi a formal bow, and with one last look over his shoulder to the door his son and the love of his life were, he left the Hokage Tower. He would leave Naruto to her grandfather, for now. He had a feeling that both of them would need some time together.